My name is Daniel Belasco, and I'm the Henry J. Lair Associate Curator at the Jewish Museum, and I'm the curator of the exhibition Shifting the Gaze, Painting and Feminism. The show is open until January 30th, 2011 at the Jewish Museum in New York. The uh, exhibition explores the impact of feminism on painting over the last 50 years or so. It includes 33 works, uh, most of which are oil on canvas, but a couple of interesting sculptures and decorative objects as well. Uh, I was looking to come up with uh, an exciting show that would draw from some hidden strengths of the, of the museum's collection, was really happy to have learned that we do have incredible paintings by Eva Hesse and Lee Krasner, so many other people who've become canonical artists within the feminist art movement. Some works have been extremely uh, influenced by feminism, and they have texts and images that are directly attacking, um, you know, sort of sexist discrimination in society. Sometimes they also made pieces that really are obviously using different types of Jewish symbols or stories or narratives um, and trying to bring feminist interpretations to those. The um, Double Red Yentl by Deborah Cass, it raises so many questions around, um, you know, around gender and Judaism. And yeah, so it is an important uh, work in both uh, subverting a certain canonical figure like Warhol and replacing with... Um, a work that's very Jewish and also uh, very feminist. The matzah, matzah meal piece from 1962 is by Audrey Flack, who became uh, known as a photorealist because putting something that was so Jewish uh, and so related to the kitchen and cooking into an oil painting um, was, you know, <laughs> was just not cool at the time. And so, uh, so Flack kept the work uh, hidden, really, for, for many, many years. It, it does seem like it also responds to Warhol, but at the same time, that Warhol was just getting started as a pop artist, and you know, women have largely been left out of the story of pop art. And Venus Parv, it's, a, uh, it's nine uh, painted plaster of Paris figurines by the artist Hannah Wilkie. They're self-portraits. Uh, so here, by choosing a title of uh, Venus Parv, she is addressing the, stere the Venus stereotype of the, the, the beauty myth. Um, but Parv, of course, is the category of food that is neither milk nor meat. So it's, uh, it's just a neutral category. It's a third category. And uh, to me, this piece is a, a longing for that kind of freedom to be, to get to escape the binary of, of gender or uh, of sexuality and to have more freedom as an individual. The Jewish Museum is an interesting history. I mean, it was, um, you know, certainly in the 50s and 60s when it was uh, famous as a venue for contemporary art, uh, probably the, the strongest and best uh, women artists at the time were included in those shows, but usually they were small in numbers and they were very much a minority. Uh, so Judy Chicago was in uh, the exhibition Primary Structures in 1966, which is considered you know, the most important exhibition of minimalist art at the time. Uh, but she was only you know, one of three women among 41 artists in total. The story of the museum and art that's self-consciously dealing with questions of gender and also gender and Judaism, you know, that story definitely starts in the 80s and it's something that um, picked up speed and gained force in the 90s. This is a painting by Dana Schutz. It's called Devour and it was painted in 2004. So here we're looking at a picture of a person eating her own hand, a devourer. And so it's, it becomes, you know, a notion of self, self-sustaining and self-nourishing, but also can be quite negative, uh, that it, the idea of eating oneself, uh, torturing oneself shuts, you know, one of her influences in this work was also the, the myth of the golem and that active transformation of, of animating life and uh, from from the mud, there are just a lot of stereotypes that are out there about what feminism might be, and um, I think that by showing a range of art that's influenced by this, I think people can find can see the diversity within feminism and see how wide ranging it is, and um, also see how relevant at least some aspects of it are to to where we are in you know in 2010.